So uh, yeah, I, I did a video on on that that nonsense. Um, yeah, the, of hormesis. Like that, I did that. This guy, Doctor Itz, who oh, um, seen that? Yeah. Uh, you haven't seen that? I have. I yeah. have. Oh, you have, yeah. So I mean, I, I, I never knew this guy, but I mean, he's just he's just one of these TikTok doctor guys, and he just does these. He just basically takes something out of context, and he and he just trashes it. Um, and he's you know he, he it's out of context. Yeah, he's he's not actually portraying the the argument the person is putting forward, and so it's very dishonest. And uh, and he did one on, on mine. He's talking about you know the you know plant. I just told that story about my professor of cancer biology saying that and that was it that was, that was all this was and he took that out of context and he tried to make it look i was saying i wouldn't let my kids eat uh plants and you know, things like that um and uh and, and and so this guy said um you know it's just like oh well all these you know he said that these um that plants have dozens of carcinogens which is you know let, let's just say that plants have dozens of carcinogens which is not true but let's say that it's oh it's not true oh is it not it's okay like a five so, minute google search to see that it's true like seriously like right you know i mean it, it means this, this is this is such a well-documented fact and so this is one of those guys that it, that has so much conceit that he thinks that just because he hasn't come across it it, it doesn't exist and if i don't know it it can't be true right so that's dumb and so then he says you know, if, if let's just say they have carcinogens, which is not true, but let's say they did. Even if they did, they'd probably be good for you because of hormesis. Like, hold on a second. You just said they don't exist. So the things that don't exist would be good for you if they existed, but they don't. Like, what a stupid thing to say. I mean, that is the most absurd statement I've ever heard in my life. I'm sorry for getting animated about that, <laughs> but, but it is a ridiculous on its face, right? So... You know, I mean, this is this is this is just absurd. So he's saying that this imaginary thing that doesn't exist is now hormetic, is now good for you somehow. Well, if it's made up, I guess we're just we're just imagining, you know, so it can be whatever we want. But the problem is they do exist. This isn't imaginary. And you know, if you're talking about hormesis, you have to know exact doses, right? Just like your exact doses of medication, you know, like digitalis has has an effect on people with with heart failure. It can make the contractility of your heart stronger. And so it can save people and give them a better life uh, who have heart failure. But if you don't give enough, it doesn't do anything. If you give micrograms too much, you kill them, right? Because that, that's what the plant's making it for. It's, it's making it to kill you. It wants to stop your heart. You eat that plant and you drop dead. That's what that's for. It did not make digitalis hundreds of millions of years ago. Because someday these little, you know, shaved apes were going to have heart heart failure, and we just, oh, we just want to help them so much. You know, I mean, that, that's that's an absurd thing to think. They they're doing it to kill you. They don't want you to eat them. You eat meat, you're dead. That's what that that plant's saying. That's what that digitalis is there for. And so, you know, you know, so understanding those dosage is is critical uh, to your health. And and again, he even showed a graph. It's like in this level, in this area, it's hormetic. And this level is toxic. Okay, well then you need to carefully define what that level is in that hormetic for range. For all 100. And they don't do that. What's that, sorry? For all 100 compounds and it has to line up. Well, that's it too. You know, there's more than one compound. It's not just digitalis. There's 100 other things, 200 things, 500 things, 5,000 things. Plants in general make around 1 million different chemicals. Most of those are there to poison you, toxify you, hurt you stop you from eating them right and so which ones are hormetic and, and again not all of these things they may be hormetic well, okay you don't know which ones let's talk specifically there are one million of them go through and show me which ones are hormetic show me the studies on each one of those that show hormesis and what levels and what ranges they're hormetic at right because they're only hormetic here and then after there they get toxic by their own definition right and so you have one that's hormetic at this level and you've just guessed it. You just have this salad and it just happens to be that one of those chemicals is just at that hormetic range, right? There's 500 other chemicals in there. Are they all hormetic at that? Are they all even hormetic? Are they all hormetic at that exact same level? How would you know? How could you possibly know? So it, this is guesswork. This is conjecture. This is, this is you know, at, at first it was, because I've been doing this for a while, um, and talking to people about this, and they say like, "Oh my God, that's ridiculous! These things don't have 
defense kennels. They don't have these toxins. That's just ridiculous. That's just absurd. And, they, and then they went and did a Google search and went, like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, okay. so they do have these defense chemicals. There actually is an entire library of books on botany that go over all of this stuff and categorize and catalog nearly a million of these things and name them. Shit, we named them all. Damn it. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, there are defense chemicals, but um, – you know, they're hormetic and they're actually good for you. I mean, I, I, it's just a cop out, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, they're just trying to fudge an answer because they don't have a good one. And so I think this is sort of the last, the last legs of a bad argument, you know, and they're just, they're just trying desperately to, to defend this and hold it together. But it's, it's, it's absurd on its face. I, I didn't know Rhonda Patrick, um, <laughs> tried to push the hormetic nonsense too, but uh, but this guy certainly did. And I've seen other people try to do it as well. A lot of the vegan sort of proponents would say like, oh yeah, well there are defense chemicals, but they're hormetic. And it's like, okay, um, you don't know that. Um, they, they've never shown any study. They just, they just say, oh, but they're probably hormetic, but they don't actually show you. They don't actually show studies. They don't actually show, okay, these are the, these are the chemicals that exist in kale. And these are the ones that are hormetic. This is the doses that are hormetic. After this, yeah, well, I agree. That's a problem. So have this much kale. They don't say that. They don't say anything like that. And uh, and that's very irresponsible, especially when you're talking about, about people's health and about something that they are admitting past a certain dose can cause harm. Yeah. I think just to bring it back, I agree with like pretty much everything you said there. Um, I think Dr. Ids was saying that they're not real, but he doesn't well, he doesn't think they're real but if they were then they would be hormetic i don't think he was saying they're not real and hormetic at the same time um no, but that, that was the saying yeah but that but that was but that's the absurdity of it right he's saying they're not real but let's say they were mm. if they were they'd likely be good for you because of hormesis it's oh, right. like, okay yeah, yeah. Hey, i'm sorry what you know that i mean that's just a Mm. that's a very silly thing to say oh, yeah. and so you know i mean because again if you're not even talking about something specific then, then how are you just saying it's hormetic, right? It, it's it's an imaginary thing. You say, oh, there's they're they're not carcinogens, but let's say they are, oh. but they're also hormetic. It's like that is internally inconsistent, and so you know it does it doesn't make sense. I could you just have to stop the person right there and be like, you need to go home and you need to think about this a little more, and then yeah. come back when you can have an adult thought in your head. Yeah, I gotcha. I make makes sense now. Um one of my favorite examples is like well we give chemo to uh, cancer patients but that doesn't mean you should just give chemo to everyone right because of hormesis yeah well that that's it you know and, and that's another one of the arguments that um you know people like dr Furman would say uh, who's, who's you know pushes a, a you know whole food raw vegan diet um and uh he had the gomes diet which was the greens onions mushrooms beans berries seeds and at first he was saying, you know, just eat a big salad, salad's a meal, you want to eat all those sorts of things, and then, you know, have some meat if you have to. Um, and then that was a bit of a ruse for, you know, raw food veganism. And and that's and that he's shown that to be the case. Since then, he said subsequently that no, any amount of meat is bad, you shouldn't eat any meat at all. Okay. Um, but one of his arguments for mushrooms, and now we have, we have an actual studies showing that the naturally occurring toxins in mushrooms outweigh the pesticides sprayed on our crops by a factor of 10,000, right? That was, that was work from Professor Bruce Ames at UC Berkeley published in 1989. And he, Ames found that in animal models that the toxins and carcinogens in mushrooms, like just, just normal white table mushrooms, white cap mushrooms, that they were 500 times more likely to cause cancer than the pesticides they were testing them against. Okay. So, you know, the idea that these, these things are just perfectly benign is, is, is just untrue and it's, and it's verifiably untrue. Um, you know, first of all, I mean, there's, there's so many, the WHO goes about that as well. You know, these, these, these toxic mushrooms and things like that, you know, they're very toxic. There's over 10,000 kinds of mushrooms, right? And think about it. How many of those don't kill you on the spot or give you a religious experience, right? There aren't many. Like the majority of these things are going to have a very serious acute phase response to you, either either deadly or, or you know, psychotropic. They're just going to, they're going to really, really mess with you, right? 
So some of them don't do that. But that doesn't mean that they're completely safe or, or even good for you. That's a, that's a very, very, very bold assumption to take with your health. And, and it's, it's wrong. So he says that you should eat mushrooms because they have anti-VEGF. And anti-VEGF is something we use in cancer, uh, cancer therapy for some cancers and chemotherapy because it stops the proliferation of new blood vessels to that cancer tumor, right? And so, um, so it, it, it uh, so it, it's, it, it, it's involved in like uh, uh, angiogenesis, so like a new blood vessels, right? So VEGF grows new blood vessels and gives new blood supply to tumors, to tumors, that's, that's what it uses. And, and for your body, your body uses VEGF. So anti-VEGF blocks that and it stops tumors from being able to make new blood supplies, so it slows it down. It's not getting blood supply, it's not getting nutrients and things like that. And so it sort of dies off in, in certain areas. And so we're saying, well, that's really good because that, that helps fight cancer. And, you know, my question is, do you have cancer mm. and why are you taking chemo? Right. You know, like that's not, that's not necessarily a good thing. And you're taking something that has over a hundred known carcinogens It's 500 times more carcinogenic than pests than industrial pesticides used commercially on crops. And so you're actually giving yourself something that can harm you and potentially even precipitate cancer. Based, you know, because it has something that might help you with cancer if you had it, which you don't. I mean, like that's not that's a bit of backwards logic as well. And uh, and yeah, you know, like you know, you don't you know say, well, these can be used medicinally, and and garlic has antibiotic uh, ha antibiotic effects. It's like, okay, do you have a bacterial infection which garlic fights? Then why are you taking antibiotics? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't take penicillin every day just because it's antibiotic. Oh, it has antibiotic effects, so I'm just going to take you know, this antibiotic every day. No, we know that that's not a good thing to do. You don't actually want to kill your native uh, bacteria and your oral biome and your, and your gut biome and things like that. Like you have this, you have bacteria that cohabitate with you. They're actually necessary and vital and that, that can actually be harmful if you do that. So yeah, I think that uh, those sorts of arguments don't, don't really stand up to even minimal scrutiny.